All right, let's talk about the Dayton Flyers. It's amazing that I can once again say it's a great time to be a Dayton Flyers fan. You know, it's been a long, long four years since they canceled the 2020 NCAA tournament and been filled with a lot of heartbreak and not a lot of NCAA tournament appearances for the Dayton Flyers. But finally, looks like that's about to change as the Dayton Flyers, at the time of the recording of this video, have started off 14 and two and have once again become ranked in the Associated Press poll. And as a Dayton resident, no better way to celebrate than with Bill's Donuts. Not sponsored though. However, Bill's, if you want to sponsor me, please do. Now, I know there's a lot of Wright State stuff in the background, but I've got some Dayton stuff behind me too before everybody gets mad at me. But it's once again a great time to be a Dayton Flyers fan. And I don't want to jinx anything, but I felt like it was kind of time to make a video about the Dayton Flyers and a little bit of a return video for myself. Been a minute. Hey, everybody. But this college basketball season has been very hectic to say the least. There's upsets every single night, but there's one team that has just not lost recently, and that's Dayton. And I'm going to be honest with you guys I don't know if they're gonna be losing any time coming soon and today I want to talk about the Dayton Flyers because they're finally having that bounce back season that every Dayton Flyers fan has been craving for the past four years you know it's been a very very long four years since they canceled the NCAA tournament back in 2020 and Dayton of course is that one team that had an amazing year in 2020 that has not gotten their redemption I mean look at all the other schools that were ranked highly in 2020 Kansas won a national championship Baylor and Gonzaga you know won a national championship played in the title game even San Diego State played in the national championship game they were obviously up there with Dayton as the surprise teams that year. But for the Flyers, they've not made the NCAA tournament since they would have in 2020. And it's a devastating thing because this is a basketball town. Dayton, Ohio is college basketball town first. And really this entire area is college basketball centric. And it's just been so frustrating being a fan and just seeing them constantly miss the NCAA tournament. I mean, heck, even my Wright State Raiders they made the NCAA tournament, won a game in their building, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about the 2024 Dayton Flyers and why this team is trying to have a little bit of redemption and the entire city's rallying behind this group. But I quickly want to go into the past and talk about what it's been like these past four years, because after that 2020 season, obviously we have 2021, which was filled with constant up and down and they just could not get any stability. That was obviously the COVID season. So it's very easy to forget what exactly went down that year. But then in 2022, they were the youngest team basically in college basketball. They had a lot of growing pains throughout the season and they ended up falling one game short of the Atlantic 10 tournament title. And they grew so much throughout the year, but losing Malachi Smith before they played Richmond, their season ended there. And then of course, Richmond went on to win a game in the NCAA tournament, which was pretty frustrating to see because that very easily could have been Dayton. And then last year, 2023, lost to VCU in the Atlantic 10 title game. So the past four years have been filled with heartbreak, but thank God Deron Holmes stayed for his third season winners stay because he's taken his time to develop and he deserves just as many flowers as Obi Toppin got in his time here see back in 2020 Obi finished his season with an average of 20 points seven and a half rebounds 2.2 assists one steal and 1.2 blocks and Deron Holmes right now averages 19.4 points 7.7 .7 rebounds 2.6 assists, 0.7 steals, and 2.2 blocks. So their numbers are very similar. And then if you use Ken Palm, the number one analytical website in college basketball, Deron Holmes currently sits fourth at the time of this recording on the Ken Palm Player of the Year list, where Obi Toppin actually finished in fourth place in 2020. So their numbers and where they sit analytically are legitimately right around the same. It's just Deron Holmes needs that breakout moment, that spotlight to elevate his game and to get people to really notice him more nationally. I mean, Duran legit should be considered for a first team All-American. He's having a season of epic proportions. And it's amazing because this is what hurt so much about that 2020 season was it felt like Dayton would never get a superstar again. Lo and behold, a guy that has stayed here, grinded, did not leave, did not go to a different school. He became the dude. He is going to have pictures of himself hanging around UD Arena. And he is absolutely one of the most beloved flyers of all time. Now the team is currently off to a 14 and two start. They're best since 2020. They're currently at the time of this recording on an 11 game win streak, shooting around 40% from three, which would be fifth in the country. They have the third longest winning streak in college basketball at the time of this recording. They are absolutely on fire and they're just flying under the radar. 
And I get that a lot of fans probably want it to continue that way because we're just tired of the heartbreak. I understand that. Nobody wants to jinx anything and nobody really wants to jump too far ahead of things. I completely understand that. But for me personally, I was just dying to make a video about this team because they're a team that I really care about and I love watching and I felt like they deserve a little bit of national praise and I felt like I could do my part in helping give this team some spotlight. But it's not just Deron Holmes. Dayton currently has the best rated starting lineup in college basketball on Evan Miyakawa's website, another analytical tracking website in college basketball. And obviously, if you're number one, you rate ahead of teams like Purdue and Kansas that have really solid starting fives. But let's talk about some of those teammates of Deron Holmes. Obviously, they lost Malachi Smith for the year, which was a devastating devastating blow. Everybody feels horrible for the kid. He's just been crushed with injuries and honest to God, he's one of my favorite flyers of all time. But the team has absolutely stepped up in his absence. And it starts with Nate Santos, a Pittsburgh transfer that has just been a rock star, an unreal portal find considering he only averaged seven minutes and 1.6 points at Pittsburgh last year. And now he averages 33 minutes and 11 and a half points. He has just been unreal for them. And then you look around this team and they're filled with shooters everywhere. Kobe Elvis, you know, a vet that has been with the his entire time here. His experience and chemistry with Duran is huge for this team. Then you've got even more transfers, whether it's Enoch Cheeks, who's filled in for the Malachi Smith role a little bit. The ball always finds him. He can hit threes. Then you've got Javon Bennett, who was the third leading scorer on Merrimack last year. He's just been another unreal portal find. And then you have somebody like Kobe Brea, who's been here for a while as well, who's coming off the bench lately. He's just a fantastic six man. And really this entire roster is constructed around guys that can stretch the floor and can hit shots anywhere. Their offense is literally just like the 2020 team. And it's just kind of ironic when you think about it. This team is just loaded with three-point shooters. I understand that they kind of live and die by the three a little bit too much. They do need to improve on the defensive end, that's for sure. But the way they play basketball, I mean, it's Anthony Grant. We know what he plays. They slow the pace down. They're one of the slowest paced teams in college basketball, and that could really help them in a tournament like setting because when you play like that, no lead is ever just going to get out of hand because you're always going to be controlling the tempo of the game. And speaking of Anthony Grant, listen guys, everybody loves him around here. He genuinely is maybe the most respected coach in the sport. Everybody raves about him. You won't find a single bad thing about him. And he's done a lot of great things for this team off the court and on the court. Obviously before the season, he was advocating for mental health. They had a charity game against Ohio State. You know, he just does a lot for the community and I feel like nobody deserves a run in the NCAA tournament like him and I'm glad that the school kept him around obviously he's an alum you can't just get rid of your own people like that so a season like this really does mean a lot I think that that's something that people really kind of overlook in college basketball is for your smaller market teams like a Dayton seasons like this mean so much to the fans and UD fans are genuinely some of the best in all of the sport and honestly in sports in general so everybody is just excited to see where this team goes in the future but now that I've given you a bit of a rundown about every thing with this Dayton Flyers team. Where do they go from here? Well, I think that one thing that just Dayton Flyers fans want in general is to just see them play in March Madness. Dayton fans are just sick of hearing about the 2020 season. Everybody wants to move past it. And every time you tune into a game, the broadcast just won't let them live it down. And it just feels like the team nationally just hasn't existed since 2020. Thank God this team is catching people's attention. And really, no matter what happens in March, I think that Flyers fans just want to see them play in the tournament. I don't think Dayton Flyers fans really have their eyes set on a national championship or a final four run i think that we're just excited to see them play in the ncaa tournament you know we've not seen the dayton flyers play in the ncaa tournament since 2017 which is just crazy to say it's been that long wouldn't have been if they didn't cancel the tournament obviously but we're just excited to see them play in march madness that's all we want this is a basketball crazed area we just want to see the Flyers in March. Now, the A-10 is hot garbage this year, so I'm not expecting Dayton to have a lot of high-profile games moving forward. But that doesn't necessarily matter because I think that that actually helps their case because like the 2020 season, they didn't lose out after losing to Colorado in Chicago that year. And it honestly kind of feels like maybe that could happen again. They just don't lose out. And that could really help their case in making a statement for themselves where they just don't lose again. And I honestly believe that's a good thing for a team like this. You know, they've got their losses out of the way. They've played some tough teams. Obviously, they played Northwestern and Houston. They lost to both of them. But I believe that this team is actually coming together as a group. They're not a deep team by any means. Their starting five is what carries them the most. That's where they get all of their production. And it starts with the guy at the top, Deron Holmes. There just feels like there's some magic in the air once again with the Dayton Flyers. And guys, it, it's gotten me so excited. And the magic has really taken off. 
with the viral video of the young PA announcer, Vincent. And you know what? Every team needs their calling card. And I feel like this little guy, he might be this team's calling card. You need a little bit of magic in March, you know, whether it's your sister Jean, something like that. And maybe Vincent can be that magic touch for this team. Zero. Oh, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. More college basketball videos will be on the way soon, guys. It's going to be a hectic race to March, and hopefully the Dayton Flyers redeem themselves, put to bed that 2020 season, because honestly, every fan wants to move past it.